Okay, so this is a video of the 90 um, electric Speedo cluster working in the 86. Um, well, it's actually in the 90 body, but using the 86 wiring harness. I have a 6.2 liter mechanical diesel with a 700R4 transmission and an MP241 transfer case with an electric Speedo vehicle speed sensor output. So I had to hook up a D-Rack module in line to the vehicle speed sensor, then to the cluster pin 18 and repin the entire cluster. This is the video showing the gauge is mostly working. The truck has been running for a few seconds, just long enough, or a few minutes long enough to, uh, it's about zero or minus one degrees Celsius. It's been running for long enough to drop off the high idle and uh, cold advance. So the temp gauge will climb up once it gets hot. The battery light is constantly on, but that's because of the way that the cluster is wired. I may have to remove a 10 ohm resistor that's in the 86 wiring that goes from the generator field circuit number 25 round wire to the alternator. That has the 10 ohm resistor in it, and that goes to the ignition switch instead of the cluster, and on the 90 it goes straight to the cluster without the resistor and goes through that bulb that right, that's right there. So I can either pull the bulb out of the back of the cluster or remove the resistor and wire it straight in. Not sure yet which way I want to do. Uh, Volt meter is working properly though. Um, I think the fuel gauge is working, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I mean, it's real close to an empty tank because I converted it from gas to diesel, so it might be working properly. And uh, I will show you the speedo working right now. Oh, hold on, I gotta turn the, the power button on. For now, it's just kind of jerry rigged up here. There we go. Alright, that's enough of that scary distance. We're just on a jock and no stands. Um, oil pressure. The water temperature is taking a while to climb up, but it does seem to be working. I don't know if I had the right sending unit. I think they're all fairly standard from, say, late 70s to 90s. The one that's in there is a 95G van with a two-wire sensor, but only hooked up to one wire. You can do them either way. Um, I think that sensor should be just fine. Um, I can't try the lights yet because I don't have the headlight switch hooked up, but I do have turn signals. Left turn. Right turn. And the park reverse neutral drive indicator is not moving just because it's not clipped onto the steering column. Like a typical GM got this stupid cable thing here, right? So I just, I, I, it's plus it's only temporarily installed for now. So that's that. Um, that's really the only changes I had to do with the 86 wiring to make it work. Uh, I've got the D rack module from the 90 hooked up here. Okay. Um, I'm only using one connector, the white one here, I think they're both white, but the smaller one is just a one wire and that's for cruise, which I will be using, and it goes into this cruise module here, and I think I can use either cruise module from the 90 TBI or from the original 86 diesel. The original 86 diesel had a speed sensor out of the back of the cluster, um, and it would have went to uh, gas, feedback, carburetor system or the early TBI, or was used in this case on the diesel. So. Um, I've just bypassed that using the electric cluster now and I've got temporarily the twisted wire from the vehicle speed sensor here just run um, right through the transfer case shifter and plugged into the uh, transfer case. So that's all good. That seems to be working okay. Um, and this wire you see here is for my check on my uh, glow plugs and uh, the other one up is water and fuel I think and then the low, low coolant is here. Actually, the local and the other one's backwards, but that's neither here nor there. I can easily straighten that out. I pulled the bulb holder out for the check engine light because it was on. It's expecting to be turned off with the engine computer, which isn't even in here, and I don't need it at all. I could just bypass, get rid of the TBI computer completely. So, see, is our, our temp gauge moved at all yet? No, man, that takes a while.
I will have to change the um, tail light connector here as well. That would have plugged into the junction box at the front here on the 90 harness, so I'll have to change it to, I've got the pigtail cut off in here somewhere. All these wiring diagrams, here it is. There we go. See, it's the same colors. I'm sure I just gotta wire it up and then it'll go back on. And I'll have to mess with the headlight connection too. Because I want to run the quad light front end. So that'll have to be rewired from the 86 to the 90. And then I'm pretty sure that this is the fuel sending unit wire that was going. Okay, once for the fuel pump, which I don't have hooked up, I'm just drawing straight to the tank with a mechanical pump on the diesel. And the other one is for the sending unit. I think the sending unit is this tan colored one here. Um, let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe that's why my gas gauges or the diesel fuel gauge isn't quite reading properly or I don't want a ground rate. And then this is the fuel sending wire of the 86 harness. It was hard wired all the way to the back from what I could tell, so I just cut it and I twisted the two together for now. Um, and I'm using the 86 6.2 liter harness on this 93 mechanical 6.5 turbo diesel. Uh, it's going to have to be modified a bit because it's a bit tight and the glow plug wires on with the turbo in the way. I kind of untaped it and stretched it a bit for now all to make it a little more tidy. And I'm concerned about the um, cold advance and high idle sensor being so close to the exhaust and turbo on this side, whether it's going to help the wiring, I don't know. So, a few things to consider yet. See that turbo wiring is obviously going to get melted there. And I got the dual alternators, this one's running for now. I did have to do uh, change the plug on that from the CS130 style too. I think this is the CS140. 44 or something, I don't know. This is a, a single wire alternator. I think the other one was a, a dual wire, had a jumper from the positive post in. So I just hooked the brown wire straight up. There's only one one little wire that's there. So I'll just have to run a jumper from this alternator to that alternator for the field circuit and from the positive ones, but I'll be a large cable and then back to the battery. And they should go then work, so that's kind of that. We're getting there. Sounds pretty good. Let's see if we've got any movement on the temperature gauge yet. It is bloody cold out here. It's at least freezing, because I mean, there's ice, so maybe it's like minus one, minus two. Oh, yeah, see, we're starting to get warm there now. Just starting to. And yesterday when I was running it, it ran up to about 90, 95 degrees Celsius. We are in Canada here, so Celsius. And uh, then the thermostat opened and it dropped down to around 45 or 50 and then went back up to around 80. And it seemed to stay around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius, which means it's around 180 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that seems about normal, right? My oil pressure's a little bit weird. I, I had a mechanical gauge on it, it's no problem, so it's either a bad sending unit maybe, weak ground wire, or just sort of a bouncy gauge. I mean, it never goes below 100 and, I don't know. This gauge is, okay, this is kilocapacitors too. I don't even know what the hell that is. So right now we're probably, I bet you 200 kilocapacitors is pretty close to 60 psi, so we're probably around 40 psi or or like 170 kilocapacitors maybe. Stupid metric pressure system. Yeah. At 140 kilometer an hour speedo in here. 
and 282,000 kilometers on that cluster, on, on the body, I guess. So. Boy, that temperature gate takes an awful long time to climb up. Awful long. I don't know if that's normal, I mean it. This maybe takes that a lot longer to warm up, these girls. Well, I might make another video when it just opens up, but for now it's just kind of boring, so I might as well stop here. And uh, But that's basically it. That's the cluster working and the wiring roughly laid out, so that makes me happy.